Hi Year 12, we are up to Act 5 of Hamlet. There are only two scenes in this act, but they're quite long scenes. So I'm going to move through it fairly quickly again, um, only paying attention to the things that I think are deeply relevant. So you'll notice that this scene takes place in a churchyard, so it's taking place outside of um, Elsinore, the castle where the majority of the action takes place. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a graveyard, so that links to the idea of life after death and the concept of um, mortality, which is really explored throughout this scene. Um, in this scene, the characters are referred to as clowns. Um, that's the, the role that they're playing, they're the comic relief in the play. Um, they're actually grave diggers in this scene, um, so they wouldn't be dressed as clowns, they'd be dressed as um, grave diggers. Um, I notice that they've got props with them so that there's some physical humour that might be accompanying what's going on here. Um, and you might want to think about any symbolism that goes along with using a spade um, on the stage. So, we're not supposed to know this until later, but they're talking about Ophelia and her burial, and they're dig digging a grave for um, Ophelia. So, um, because Ophelia maybe committed suicide. It's a little bit unsure. She went into the um, lake and didn't try to save herself. So whether she was trying to commit suicide or whether she just was mad enough that she didn't try to save herself um, is unclear. So the first clown um, says that it's um, not right for someone who has committed suicide to be um, buried on Christian land. Um, and the, they just have a conversation um, making jokes about a current court case in Shakespeare's time about the fact that it's been allowed. So it's, it's quite long and it's not really funny outside of Shakespeare's context because you need to know the specifics of the court case um, at the time. So I'm going to skip through it. Um, something that is significant is the sense of um, class um, and status that comes out of this. So the second clown says... Um, if this had not been a gentlewoman, she would have been buried out of Christian burial. So Ophelia's status and her place in society is more significant than the religion. Um, and the first client adds to that by saying that um, great folk have countenance or permission in this world to drown or hang themselves um, more than their fellow Christians. So even Christian means their fellow Christians. So... Um, it's just this, they're commenting on the fact that rich people can get away with more, people of high status can get away with more. Um, so then they go on making jokes about um, social class and about um, the fact that um, that um, Adam and Eve probably had to dig graves as well. Anyway, it's not that funny to a modern audience. Um, so then we have Hamlet and Horatio come in, which means that they're eavesdropping um, on this part of the conversation. Um, and then the first clown um, digs and sings. So again, we've got song taking place um, on stage. So Hamlet comments on that. Um, he says, has he no feeling of his business? Doesn't he understand how serious what he's doing is? Um, you know, he's digging a grave for someone who's died. He should be sad and serious and somber. Um, but instead, he sings. So he's commenting on that contrast between his business um, and the mannerisms that are, bit, that are taking place. And then that's compounded when he has the action of throwing up a skull. So he's singing a love song and he's throwing around the bones of people who have been buried in the churchyard before. Um, Hamlet gets a little bit philosophical about this situation um, and he says that that skull could be from a politician um, and now this grave digger, this ass, um, has sort of treated it badly. So again, it's that idea that social status in life means nothing in death. Um, so focusing on the concept of mortality. Um, and then Hamlet goes on, it could be a lover. Um, and now it belongs to the worms. Um, so then we have the clown throwing up another skull. So the more physical action um, and use of props and the um, symbolism of using the skulls as a prop. Um, and so then um, Hamlet talks about this one, same basic idea. And he basically just says... Um, 
that there's no reward in death that matches the work that we put in in life. That we work really hard through our life to get um, all of these earthly rewards and then we die and our bones get thrown around by someone who's beneath us. Um, so then uh, Hamlet starts a conversation with the clown, um, asks him whose grave it is, um, and the clown replies that it's his. Um, he's making a joke because he's digging the grave that belongs to him, but Hamlet is actually asking um, about who is going to be buried in the grave. Um, and so then um, Hamlet starts making a pun about lying in the grave, obviously playing on the two meanings of lying, one being dishonest and one lying down inside the grave as the dead body. Um, and so it's just a series of fairly quick and witty repartee between Hamlet and the clown, so perhaps you can comment on what that shows us about Hamlet's personality and his character. Um, he's quite clever. When he's not being mad, he's quite um, witty. Um, and then we have... Um, we have a comment about this, the current day and age in Denmark. So he says, The age has grown so picked that the toe of the peasant comes so near the heel of the courtier. So he's saying that in this day and age, um, social position doesn't really afford much respect. So he's talking about the fact that the first clown is speaking to him fairly disrespectfully. Um, and he's... Um, he's it's, he's saying that that's a negative thing because he says that the age is picked, so it's a negative term there. Um, obviously, the clown doesn't know that he is Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, um, but he's dressed quite well, so you would know that he is um, a courtier and someone quite well off in this, in this society. Um, so then they have more conversation, um, talking about Hamlet himself this time, but there's nothing really significant there. Um, And then Hamlet changes the topic because it's getting a bit off topic. So he says that here, changes the topic. Um, and then um, the clown says that at the moment there are many corpses that are rotten by the time they get put into the grave, as in people are sick when they're alive, so by the time they die and are buried, their bodies have started to rot already. In particular, that's referring to the high number of deaths from diseases like syphilis, um, where you um, physically decay quite significantly before you die. Um, so perhaps that links into the theme of death and the theme of mortality and the context in which the play was written Death, obviously, was much more common then, um, and, and it was quite a hideous prospect because if you died from a disease, you could expect the, um, to lose a lot of your appearance um, before that happened. Um, so then they continue to have a funny conversation, um, and the clown identifies who the um, skull that has just been thrown out of the grave belongs to, it belonged to Yorick, the king's jester. Um, and so then Hamlet picks the skull up. So now we have Hamlet standing on stage holding the skull. So it's quite symbolic. And from this point forward, Hamlet's tone changes. He goes from um, bantering and being quite witty and quippy with the clown um, to a much more philosophical contemplation of the nature of mortality. Um, and so we have his poor Yorick monologue here, named after the first section there, um, while he's holding that skull, symbolic for death. So what he's saying in this monologue is that he knew Yorick in, in life, and holding his skull, it's quite grotesque to think about the times that they spent together, because he thinks he's thinking of it with Yorick as a skeleton now. Um, and then he ends with um, a reference to Ophelia, and he said, um, no matter how much women use makeup to hide the reality of their faces, we all end up dying in the end. So as well as being a comment on appearance versus reality, the reality being death and the appearance being the makeup, um, the dramatic irony there is that, of course, the audience knows that his lady, Ophelia, is actually already dead. Um, so it's actually a really inappropriate thing for him to say in the circumstances, but he doesn't know that she's dead. So then um, Hamlet continues with his philosophizing. So when he talks about Alexander, he means Alexander the Great. Um, 
and he says that when we die, we return to base uses. Um, so base being, um, you know, negative and pejorative, that that there's nothing valuable in death. Um, so he refers to the noble dust of Alexander because Alexander is a fantastic hero of the past, um, and then denigrates that and says that um, after he dies and disintegrates, for all we know, that has gone into the making of um, a stopper for a cask of wine. So it's ironic to think that this once great leader has now become the stopper for wine. It's such a lowly task. Um, so he ends with a, a rhyming quatrain, so that's four lines that rhyme, where he says, Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that that earth, which kept the world in awe, should patch a wall to expend, expel the winter floor. So um, this rhyming quatrain sounds quite childish and has a very mocking tone, which math matches that, dis that, that dismissive and disrespectful comment about death that um, Hamlet is making. He's saying that death itself is an act of disrespect because no matter how great you are in life, you um, end up being used for really mundane tasks, such as the grave digger throwing the skull of Yorick around. Um, so then we have... Um, basically the rest of the cast entering, all the other characters, with the body of Ophelia for the burial. Um, and I am going to draw your attention to one more thing. Um, Ophelia is being buried with maimed rites because she committed suicide, so um, she's not getting a proper Christian burial, which means that she's probably going to end up in purgatory, if not hell. Um, and then when Hamlet sees everybody coming in, he doesn't want them to know... Um, that he's back yet, he doesn't want to um, confront them yet, so he and Horatio hide and eavesdrop on what's going on. Um, I'm going to leave this one here because the bell's just gone, so I will continue um, later.